Hello everyone. Uh, I'm I'm Jiangwen, Jiangwen Zhang from Microsoft Research, and this work is a uh, joint work between Microsoft and uh, Science and University in China. Uh, this work is about to how to uh, represent the entities and the words in the uh, same vector space. Uh, this outline uh, after the motivation and uh, related to works. Uh, the modeling will include uh, three parts, how to represent the, uh, the knowledge, and how to model the text, and uh, finally how to guarantee the uh, entity and the words, the vector are in the same space. In the, in the, exper in the, in the uh, experiments, I will report two, uh, two set of experiments on how the joint embedding helps the knowledge embedding and also helps the word embedding. And in the first set of experiments, there will be one experiment about how the embedding approach uh, helps the relational factor extraction. So I think this may be the reason why this paper appeared in this session. Uh, the, uh, the, the research is motivated from the task of completely missing facts for uh, the knowledge graph such as free base. For example, the profession of this, uh, this guy, Alexander, is missing. How to uh, fill this missing value? Actually, this task is pretty critical for industry. For example, in Freebase, actually, there are more than 60% of people have no profession, and more than 70% of people have no place of birth. Actually, it's not a special case. It's, it's, it's pretty common among almost all the predicates. Uh, generally, there are two approaches to solve the problem. The, uh, the first one is uh, we are very familiar with is that how to extract from some external data such as the uh, Wikipedia text. So along this line, there are, are many, many excellent works uh, such like the distance version based method and also including the previous papers in this session. And we are working on the second approach of how to reason new facts from the internal knowledge graph. And uh, for example, uh, this is a piece of subgraph from Freebase. Uh, we see that the profession of Alexander is, is missing. But uh, if we look into the graph, we find that even without seeing any external text corpus, we can find some internal evidences from the uh, knowledge graph itself. For example, Alexander is the student of France, who is an anthropologist. The second, uh, uh, the anthropologist like uh, Franz and Marvin authored some books of the topic of anthropology. In the same time, uh, Alexander also authored a book of the same topic of anthropology. So uh, if we can aggregate this kind of uh, evidence together, we can reason out that the uh, profession of Alexander should be anthropologist. However, in practice, actually uh, the problem is more challenging because that almost uh, every knowledge graph in practice is uh, far from completed. The coverage is very limited, so it's possible that the value anthropologist is also uh, absent from the uh, KB. But we are sure it may appear in some text corpus. So the problem is that can we still perform such kind of reasoning across the knowledge graph and the text corpus? So this is our work, uh, we, which we are uh, focused on. And uh, along this line, there are uh, two lines of related work. The first is in, uh, knowledge embedding. Uh, Board uh, at L proposed a uh, very simple but very effective, effective approach called TransE, uh, which to uh, model a, uh, a triplet of a fact as a simple vector operation on the entities. For example, the vector of China plus the vector of the capital city should be close to the vector of Beijing. And with this assumption, they learn the uh, vectors for the entities and the predicates from the given KB. And during the runtime, so they can simply use this kind of uh, vector operation to predict the missing facts, to provide a score for candidate facts by the uh, vector plus the predicate 
whether it's close to the uh, candidate value. So uh, Western et al. Um, firstly applied the transit to the problem of fact extraction and uh, they simply combined the scores from the text extractor and the score from the embedding and they find it is very permission to improve the, uh, the uh, distance of region based uh, uh, extractor. And on the second line, actually, it's very interesting that the Miklov in the paper, a word to vector, find that uh, uh, simply learning the vectors of words from pure text are able to review the relationship between words. For example, uh, the uh, vector of Beijing minus the vector of China plus the vector of Japan is very close to the vector of Tokyo. So, um, our, our, so uh, our intuition is to try to combine the capability of both kinds of methods. So uh, on the one hand, actually for trans E, such kind of knowledge embedding, if the candidate of the triplet of effect contains some entities out of the KB, because the embedding cannot provide the vector for this out of KB entity, so this kind of method cannot provide the scores for the candidate triplet effect. That means they cannot deal with the fact that involving out of KB entities. On the other hand, for a word to vector does not know what exact relationship between Beijing and China, because uh, it's very simple that it, 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 it has no such kind of schema supervision from the KB. So uh, we propose to uh, jointly to represent the entity predicate and the words in the same vector space so that um, even when the candidate triplet contains some entity out of KB, so as long as the entity appear in the text corpus of some kind of a word, we can still provide score for the candidate effects. And uh, um, at the same time, we, we believe that the utilize such kind of semantic knowledge from the KB should be held the, uh, to guide the learning of word embedding. So uh, by means of jointly embedding, we represent the entities, the words and phrases as continuous vectors in the same vector space. And for the relationship uh, in the KB, actually um, we represent it as some operators in the space. For example, the simplest case is the uh, translation vector used in trans -E. For example, the Tom Hanks the vector plus acting vector is very close to first example. And also we can use other kind of uh, operators among the uh, vectors. And during the embedding, we try to preserve the uh, relationships in original knowledge graph and also try to preserve the word coherence in text corpus. So to achieve this goal, we uh, try to optimize this objective function composed of three parts, knowledge model, text model, and the alignment model. So for the knowledge model, actually, we, can, we define these um, conditional probability for a fact of the HRT. H means the head entity, R is the relation, T is the tail entity. And this conditional probability basically means that if the distance between the vector of H plus R minus T is, um, is, is, is very small, then the probability will be very high. So similarly, we can uh, define the probabilities for T condition R, H, and R condition H, T. And we uh, define the objective function by this conditional log likelihood over these three probabilities. And we hope that the vectors of the entities relations learned from the KB should be able to maximize this log likelihood. And about the text model, we uh, define this uh, probability for the word coherence. If the two words W1, W2 coherence in some text window, then the conditional probability basically, um, uh, for each word, we have two vectors similar with that word, the W2V. One is the input vector, one is the output vector. So this means that if the output vector of W1 is very close to the input vector of W2, then the conditional probability will be high. So uh, I will explain why I use this kind of very, uh, seems very simple uh, model. So the key assumption here is what we call the relational coherence assumption. 
So that means if two words could occur in some type of context, so there should be some relation between the two words. For example, the, uh, the, uh, for, this con for, for, for this sentence, the Microsoft and American could occur in this text window. This should be called that there are some hidden relation between these two words, although we don't know what exact relation they are. So that means uh, we can just treat the pair of words as a candidate fact with a hidden relation. So that means we can apply simply a my, apply our knowledge model here. But the problem is that the number of unique hidden relations should be very huge. So we need some method to reduce the number. So we introduced the auxiliary variables by simply to let the W1 plus R, the vector, by a new variable that is the output vector of W1. By this simple approach, we can reduce the number of the hidden relation to the, just as the number of unique uh, words. So in this way, we can finally get our simple model. So actually, this means that we use a unified knowledge model also worked on the text, that we treat the relation as a hidden and utilize some approximation to reduce the freedom of the parameters. But until now, we need some mechanism to guarantee that the vectors of entities and the words in the same vector space. So uh, we have two approaches. The first one is based on Wikipedia anchors. For example, for uh, this uh, uh, Wikipedia page, there is an anchor, Redmond. So we can know which URL it refers to. And for the URL uh, of Wikipedia page, we can find the uh, equivalent to the freebies entity. That means that this anchor is also an entity involved in the, in the uh, knowledge model. At the same time, because the surface form of the S anchor, the Redmond is, uh, is also a word, so it also involved in the text model. And in this context, we require the two vectors should be the same. So in this way, the knowledge model and the text model can be uh, correlated by these, these, these anchors. And uh, the second alignment model is based on the entity names. So a very, uh, uh, a very simple uh, idea is to, we can just uh, to require, to enforce the vector of uh, entity is, is uh, the same as the vector of the name string. But actually this, this kind of method is of high risk. This is because that uh, we can simply find that uh, it's a very uh, common problem. With the same name of a first account, it corresponds to many entities. So if we simply to enforce the, the vector of the name string is the same as the, the vector of the entity ID, it should be a serious problem of the ambiguity. So we use an indirect method that is for each candidate, for, for each triplet of a fact in the knowledge graph, we will augment the two triplets for that by replace the uh, entity ID with its name. So, so that um, we have two more triplets for this uh, triplet. Then we can simply add these augmented triplets into the original knowledge graph. So, uh, and apply the knowledge model to this part of the data and on this part of the data, it will help correlate the knowledge model and the text model. But then notice that here, we did not simultaneously re to replace the both sides of the uh, two, uh, two entities. It is of the same concern of the uh, ambiguity. Uh, about the uh, training, we simply use the SGD to uh, optimize the uh, uh, objective function. And, uh, for some tricks, because the probabilities of the, uh, the, the, the two probability both contains the uh, normalizers which involving, which involves the summation over very big, very large uh, vocabulary. So we use, uh, simply use two sampling to approximate this summation. And uh, in terms of the implementation, we uh, implement by multi-thread with shared memory and without any knock on, 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 on the memory to extend it. And then we conduct experiments on almost the full scale of freebase and Wikipedia. And the freebase, uh, we used about 50 million of the entity, almost the, uh, the full set, and the 200 million triplet of facts. 
and the first set of the Wikipedia the, uh, English version. And uh, the task is to, to uh, we call that the, uh, is proposed by Sorcher et al. called the triplet classification. That means given a candidate triplet of fact HRT, we need to confirm whether it is true or false. And uh, for, the, uh, for the positive ones is come from the uh, knowledge base. And for the, for, for the uh, negative one, it's just to randomly corrupt it from the positive ones. And, and construct it as a balanced binary classification. And because the, we want to, uh, want to evaluate the performance on so-called out of KB, the entities. So we simulated this out of KB by uh, holding on a pattern of entities from free base. And it treat this part of entities as, as uh, just as uh, common phrases rather than uh, entities with IDs. And so uh, any triplet of fact containing these part of entities, should, we will consider it as uh, out of KB. So uh, the uh, scale is, uh, scales are in these uh, tables. And uh, for the results, uh, first basically we find that um, it's very simple that if, if, if we only perform knowledge embedding on the knowledge graph, or we separately perform knowledge embedding and word embedding, the, the performance on the um, out of KB triplets will be very poor, almost uh, the random, because they cannot handle such kind of uh, uh, triplets. But via the jointly embedding, we can see that uh, it performed pretty well on this part of uh, triplets. And at the same time, we find that uh, to compare the two types uh, alignment uh, models, the alignment by the entity named performed much better than the previous one. But this kind of result in the paper is mixed. In the later, you will see another experiment that uh, alignment by anchor will be better in the word embedding task. And um, is uh, it's very simple that uh, since the embedding is able to provide their scores for a candidate triplet of fact, so it should be able to help the fact extraction. So we verify this by the same experiment setting with that uh, riddle in the New York Times and the Freebase. And we also follow the uh, exact same setting of the Westnet L in last year's EMMP. That is, we have text and apply a relational factor extractor, and we get some candidate triplets and the scores. Then for each candidate tri triplets, we apply the embedding vectors to provide a, another score. Then we combine the scores from the text extractor and the scores from the uh, embedding. So this is the result that um, this the precision and the record curve. Um, the text side extractor is a method proposed by Western et al. in last year's EMLP. And the baseline of, uh, is also the Western method of uh, combining the transee embedding with the extractor. And uh, this is the, uh, the green line. And our method is the uh, red line to combine the jointly embedding with the text extractor we see that the, the, the uh, improvement is very promising. And uh, because that our joint embedding also produces vectors for words and phrases, so it can also function as a kind of word embedding. So we evaluated the performance on the task of analogical reasoning. So uh, the task is that um, we try to assess the, um, the analogies of the pair of words. For example, uh, if the Paris is the nearest neighbor of France plus Beijing minus China, then the answer is correct. Otherwise, it's wrong. And this evaluation is following the same set, same data set, and the same metric in the W2V paper of Mikolov. And uh, in the result, we find that uh, uh, the first, uh, we know that in, in, in this task, the data includes uh, two types of uh, analogies. The first uh, is called the semantic, and the second is called the syntactic. Semantic means the relationship like the, uh, the Beijing, China, uh, Paris, France, this kind of relation. The syntactic means uh, the relationship like boy and the boys. 
So uh, we find that the jointly embedding with alignment by weak anchors is able to improve, to slightly improve the semantic data, but drop a little on the synthetic task. Uh, but the only, uh, only tables in, uh, involving the phrases rather than a single word, uh, the jointly embedding improves much more. But um, on the other hand, uh, we find that um, alignment by item names perform much, much worse than the uh, uh, by weak anchors. Uh, we analyzed that this uh, mainly because there are two reasons. The first is the ambiguity. And that means uh, a word or phrase may have multiple meanings. And the second one is that uh, because the we, when we use the entity names, we know that in Freebase actually, Freebase are not able to capture all the variants of any other for entity. So uh, we lose some information and bias the, the uh, embedding of words. And uh, um, that's the uh, conclusion. So the first we, we continue to confirm that uh, embedding is very effective to help raise new facts from existing knowledge. And we propose a method to jointly represent the entities and words in the same vector space. And uh, we propose a unified model on the knowledge and the text. In some sense, we can explain why the word embedding is able to discover such kind of uh, parallel uh, relationships. And um, second, we, uh, we enable scoring can candidate effects involving some entities out of KB. And we observed the permission improvement to factor extraction from text. And at, this, at the same time, there is some modest improvement over the word embedding, although the experiment results are mixed among the two types of alignment model. On the task of um, factor prediction, the alignment by weak by weak anchors is better, but on the uh, the alignment by the uh, entity name is better, but on the word embedding, alignment by weak anchor is better. So in the in the future, we try to get better alignment model. The first one is to we try to we hope to find an alignment model able to deliver consistent contribution to both the knowledge embedding and the word embedding, and we try to remove the dependencies on the weak anchors that uh, constrains us to, to scale up. So basically, we try to perform a task like the joint disambulation and perform the alignment. Thanks. Question? Nice, nice talk. I have a question about the um, number of vectors are you trying to estimate? Is it the number of entities plus the number of unique words in text or the number of entities uh, plus the number of unique words minus the alignment between them? Uh, the vector is uh, for all the entities mm -hmm. and the words and some phrases pr produced by the open NLP. Basically, this, the, this, the, uh, this is the entity detected by OpenLP. So overall, there will be uh, about uh, 50 million of the entities plus uh, about uh, 5 million of uh, words and phrases. Yeah, uh, um, but I think actually the two kind of embeddings, they can share something since uh, some some phrases in the text that can be aligned to the entities in the knowledge graph. Yeah. So why don't you use the same vector during yeah. the training? Yeah, actually this is about the uh, alignment model. So uh, your proposal is to, because some entities, for example, for example Microsoft Infrabase, mm -hmm. the, the ID. So your proposal is to enforce the vector of this ID is the same as the vector of the word of Microsoft. Right? Yes. Yeah. So uh, actually, we have tried this um, this method. Uh, actually, th this is about uh, about how to alignment, right? So the the serious problem is about ambiguity. That means, uh, for example, here is oh, the, oh. the first gum corresponding to many yeah, entities. Yeah, you mean so one entity might um, 
align the two several right, right, right. Uh, right, right. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. Actually, yeah. if you look at the, the real free base data, for some domains like f film, music, book, mm -hmm. for such kind of domains, 99% of the entities with uh, a bunch of entities. So that means the ambiguity problem is very serious in, in, in some domains. Actually, these domains are very popular domains. Yeah. So same. that's why we, we, we use an indirect method, but, uh, they do, but it still has the, this problem of ambiguity, but I think it can, can uh, reduce this impact. Okay, thanks. Uh, uh, thanks, next talk. Just a follow-up question. Have you ever tried to disambiguate um, the text before and then apply the, the method instead of do the alignment model? Um, yeah, good question. So uh, your question is uh, to whether we can first uh, do disambiguation and then perform the alignment, right? So uh, actually for the first method, if we hope to uh, to remove, remove the dependencies on Wikipedia anchors, we should have such kind of methods. Because currently we utilize the Wikipedia anchors, so it already designed, it, it, it has no ambiguity because it, 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 it's the real anchor. So uh, for this part, uh, our future work is exactly what you said, that we try to remove this dependency on the specific Wikipedia anchors. We try to jointly learn the embedding, jointly alignment, and uh, do disambiguation. So this is for, for, for uh, this part. But for this part, actually, uh, you know that for this part, we, we actually, the, the name of entity has no context. It's a global thing. So there's no such kind of uh, concept like disambiguation. So the disambiguation should be performed in this model. Yeah, okay. And it's our future work. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Any more questions? Okay, uh, this wraps up the session. Uh, thank you again. <laughs>